Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Earl Sweatshirt album, Doris. Earl Sweatshirt, California rapper, member of the infamous Odd Future Wolf Gang Kill Them All hip hop collective. And this is the long awaited follow up to his debut tape that came out a handful of years ago. And maybe it wouldn't have taken him so long to follow it up had he not been sent away to a troubled boys camp in Samoa by his mother? And I in no way whatsoever question the parenting abilities of, of Mrs. Sweatshirt. However, I do wonder whether or not that sort of stalling prevented this album from being as, as big as it could have possibly been. Because when Odd Future was first getting huge, it was like there was a, an incredible demand to hear music with the whole free Earl hype. Tyler, the creator, saying that Earl is, is far better a rapper than he is, and the mixtape that he dropped itself shows that he is one of the better MCs in Odd Future in general. Definitely with Earl, you don't get the cheap production, the weak flows, the bad singing that sometimes appear on Odd Future releases. However, I don't really feel like he ends up coming ahead of the pack on Doris. What Earl serves up well on this LP are flows, wordplay, and just a really strong mood. Maybe mood is the strongest characteristic of this entire LP. This album is dark, it's nocturnal, it's pretty low key, kind of surreal. In some ways I do feel like this album is a mature growth past that dark side that Odd Future used to have in its earliest stuff. And that shows to me because lyrically Earl is, is going for a lot less shock value. And I think he has brought the best, best, instrumentals that have appeared on any Odd Future project across the board. You have Earl himself doing production and co-production under the name Random Black Dude on this LP. The Wu-Tang's The RZA is on this thing, as well as The Neptunes. I think the only instrumentals that I didn't dig were the one that opened this LP up. It just sounded like chopped and screwed molasses to me. The beat that Tyler put together on Sasquatch kind of sounded like a wolf throwaway. He drops this awful line saying that he used to be dope, but now he's not dope anymore, but Chris and Rihanna are fucking, so there's still hope. Oh shit, he went there, which is, uh, there's nothing worse than someone who thinks they're being controversial when they're not. I don't even think someone on The View would have batted an eye at that line. Maybe my least favorite song on this LP overall, the one with Mac Miller on it, Guild, was the title. The song for me was really too slow to be exciting, too sparse to be interesting, and to hear Earl and Mac Miller just pitch shifted lower for a full few verses, which were pretty empty substance-wise, was just terrible. Still, I was happy to hear a group of instrumentals that covered a wide array of hip-hop flavors from the more synthetic stuff to jazz rap and boom bap. The song Burgundy brings these grand horns and pianos with this awesome little synth lead in the background. Instrumentally, to me, the song Hive is kind of like an improvement on this Yonkers formula, and the track Chum kind of has that rough synthesizer odd future flavor to it, but it's balanced out a little bit with these weird piano samples. I love the heavy, thick bass on Centurion, Bad Bad Not Good kills it on horse, and the beat that the RZA brought to the table wasn't bad, could have come from any era or could have just been a throwaway for him, but I feel like it worked itself into the album well. But when it comes to features, Doris starts to get a little inconsistent, especially right at the start of this thing with Le Flair, who brings this just boring flow, boring, tough-talking, bland verse, and very little in the way of personality. Another feature that completely disappointed me on this thing, the RZA on Molasses, horrifyingly underutilized on this track. I'll fuck the freckles off your face, bitch. Really bringing a hip hop giant down to that odd future level. The features I ended up liking were Frank Ocean, who had some interesting wordplay about his sexuality on Sunday, and just a very personal verse on this song. There was Damo Genesis, who completely surprised me on this thing. I've heard him on some tracks from Wolf where he sounded pretty good, but he came out very hungry on Doris, actually. As far as Vince Staple goes, to me, a more interesting rapper than Earl on this album, too, when he spits some bars. Though, I will say that part of what makes him so appealing is that he sounds like a little baby Snoop Dogg. But still, to me, Vince Staple seems to have this kind of charismatic, quiet, swaggy, badass, tough talking persona down. Tools hit like pool sticks the way I cue shit. Oh. 
As far as Earl goes, he's hard to make heads or tails of sometimes. Occasionally on Doris, he'll come through with a song where the intentions are very, very clear. Chum, where he's getting incredibly personal, talking about his non-existent relationship with his father, growing up, a whole series of things. Burgundy delves into his current mind state and sort of has him dealing with his fans in a way, hearing them say, dude, we don't care how you feel, we just want bars. And Sunday seems kind of like a tender personal moment for Earl as well, dealing with some of the love and some of the turbulence going on in his life due to drugs or just the trouble he's been getting in or his fame and music career. However, to me, this song has an incredibly weak hook. Not only do the lyrics not really jump off the page to me, but it's delivered with absolutely no enthusiasm whatsoever. There are moments where I kind of wonder whether or not Earl wants to be here. But I think what really ends up killing this thing is that when we drift away from the more focused tracks and get into songs that just have one loose bar after another, uh, the album becomes a little shallow and kind of forgettable. And there are moments like this where lyrically Earl is an interesting MC. Other spots where he says his mama raised him a prophet, and instead of rhyming that with profit, he rhymes it with dollar incentive, which of course does not rhyme, but... You get it. I also dug the line where he said he spits blizzardous and then goes to eat venison with St. Nicholas. It's moments like this where he really reminds me of MF Doom, where you have this guy putting himself into these weird, ridiculous, abstract situations where he's just doing something that's kind of evil or villainous. But delivery-wise, even though he has flow, he is just such an unenthusiastic and just kind of lackluster guy to listen to for the length of an entire LP. He doesn't bring a lot of different ideas and a lot of diversity to the table, at least when it comes to his rap style. I don't really feel like this is going to be an explosive release for Odd Future because of how narrow the appeal of this album is. And I think in a way it could kind of be a grower if it weren't for the fact that when I dig deeper into the LP, there's not much to find other than some witty wordplay here and there. Other than that, this LP kind of delivers up the same sort of cocky, violent, blunt, blowing immaturity that a lot of Odd Future releases do, just maybe with a bit more talent and, and focus. I did like this thing, I just think it's too underwhelming and full of potholes for me to be completely enamored with it. <sighs> but what do you think of Doris? Do you love this album? Do you hate it? Why? And what do you think I should review next? Only the strong subscribe? All mistakes were intentional. Anthony Fantano, Earl, Doris, forever.